The big man is out on the track and all eyes are on the greatest sprinter in history. As ever, when we see the top sprinters, and particularly that man, there's great Jamaican support. It's a long way from Jamaica to Beijing, but uh, he doesn't lack for support. And even if it's not his uh, compatriots who are supporting him, he's loved all around the world for what he's done. And of course, what he's done is almost the legend started the really big time here in Beijing seven years ago. Well, we are scheduled to have this race start in four minutes' time. Such a sense of excitement here in the stadium. There are many great characters in the sport of athletics, but at the moment there are none bigger or more enigmatic or charismatic than Usain Bolt. The 100 metres semi-finals, three of them of these IF World Championships as we build in intensity on day two of these championships. World record Usain Bolt, 9.58 and that of course the championship record when he won the title in 2009. First two from each of these semi-finals will go to the final which concludes this evening's entertainment. And then two more on times from the three races. We've seen some very fast sprinting. These men capable of adding to that. Rus, Lemaitre, Bramel, De Grasse, Sue, Bolt, Harvey and Bruintiz. Not only is there interest in the great man, but also plenty of crowd support for the Chinese record holder, Zhu Bingtian, just Hey, next to Bolt in lane six, so let's go through this lineup. This is Julian Roos, who's the co holder of the German record at 10.05, 27 year old German champion at 100 and 200 meters. Krislov Lemaitre, the European double champion in 2012, two silvers in 2014, 992, his best at the 100 meters. All but two of these. Finalists, uh, semi finalists, have broken 10 seconds. Diminutive figure, but a real new powerhouse, a great new talent. Trayvon Brumel from the United States, 20 years of age, second in the American Collegiate this year. He's studying at Baylor University. And then this man, who was the sensation of the American Collegiate Champions Championships, Andre de Grasse of Canada. Not only that 995 personal best, but also a wind assisted 975 for the Canadian and Pan American Games champion. Another 20-year-old. <laughs> then we have Su Biangtan of China, twice the Asian champion, roared on by the huge crowd here in the Bird's Nest Stadium in Beijing. Su, who's run 999. And then the great man himself, Usain Bolt, seeking to add to his wonderful record of sprints over the last decade and proud to represent the great Caribbean sprinting nation of Jamaica. Lane eight, we have a former Jamaican. It's Jack Ali Harvey, now Turkish, and he set a Turkish record this year at 10.03. And finally, the co-holder of the South African record at 9.97, Henrico Bruintjes. That is the lineup. Just two men sure of taking their place in the final. And Usain Bolt goes in this race in lane seven. Oh, we saw some wonderful sprinting in the heats yesterday. Conditions not quite as ideal, but it's still pretty good. It's a nice evening, 20 plus degrees Celsius. And it's really getting serious now. Fast times yesterday, but this is where it really starts to count this to see who will take place in the final. Rus, Lemaitre, Bramel, De Grasse, Sue, Bolt, Harvey, Brunches. Semi-final number one, men's 100 meter hurdles of these 2015 World Championships.
How well's he got away? Not bad, or a little stumbled out at the start, and Sue of China is ahead. But Bright's got a lot of work to do to come through here, or well, there's going to be a sensation. But just look at him come through when it mattered. He has done it. He's uh, accompanied into the final by De Grasse of Canada, but the stumble early on almost cost him dear, but never right off this man. That surge of power in mid-race and the way he came through just to make it in time means that we will see him in the final, but he's going to have to run better than that. It's 9.96, time shared by De Grasse, and those two are the men who are going to make sure of going through to the final. That was very, very tight indeed for about 20 metres during that race early on. It looked as though Usain Bolt would have to try and wait to see if he went through as a fastest loser. Massive roar from the crowd because Bing Tian Xiu has just produced a national record in 9.99. But that stumble right at the beginning, third from left, there's the stumble. And look at how much ground he has to make up. Bolt is under immediate pressure there and it wasn't until the last two or three metres that he was guaranteed a passage through to the final. That was very, very tight, and he will be concentrating even harder when he comes back. That would have been awful if he hadn't even made the final. That was very, very close. Well, let's hope that that's the only problem he has, and it's out the way today. De Grasse, though, run well. I think Usain tried to make it look easy by looking across to pretend that he was easing down, but he really wasn't. He had to work all the way to the line to get this one. He was coming hard, there's no question about that. But it was awfully close, it really was. Just on the line there, and there was four athletes going across it together. Look at that. If that had been anyone else, their race would have been over. Without any question. Well, what a wonderful point from Sue. He got the national record there, 999. They love it here. Well, that would have been a massive disappointment, not only for Usain Bolt, but the whole crowd and perhaps the whole of the championships, really, if he didn't get through. Let's watch again. One or two strides there, he gets into the river, but then all of a sudden he just seems to slip. And only a man of his calibre can recover from that. He gets himself up again. This is it. This is Usain Bolt working hard. You very rarely see this. But he had to do it to get back. He knew that this stage, I think, that he just got it. He looks across to check, but it was close. No doubt that. There was at one stage there a little bit of doubt in his mind, I think, whether he was going to do it. Yes, even the greatest. Sometimes have to deal with a near disaster there because he almost fell. And wow, that's behind him. He can forget about it when it comes to the final. If there is a positive to be taken as Sue soaks up the deserved plaudits and applause, four men under 10 seconds. Well, there's the final result then of that uh, fantastic race. Bolt and De Grasse sharing the same time at 9.96. They're through to the final. And Brumel and Sue have run 9.99, four men under 10. If there is a positive to take from that, <clears throat> he will be even more focused for the final than he might otherwise have been because he knows he's got to be on absolute top form. Just as he was in Daegu after being disqualified for a false start in the 100, he made absolutely sure that he came back and rectified the mistake by winning the 200. I'll tell you, the other fascinating thing really in that race is the other athletes must have wondered what was going on. Because yes. Bolt wasn't even yes. Where is he? Yes. yes, exactly. You know, where is because he? Brumel, I think, was leading probably at about 50 metres. And he had, what, two metres at least on yeah. Bolt at that point. He wouldn't have seen him. No, I, I just think they probably didn't know what was going on. And it must have gone through their mind. Where yeah. is he? Yeah. We turn our attention to the second of the semi-finals in the men's 100 metres. Justin Gatlin goes in five. The fastest man in the world this year. We also now know that anyone taking either of the fastest loser spots in the final will have to run at least as fast as 9.99. Four men in the first semi-final under 10 seconds. Two very fast Americans in this semi-final. From the inside, Levi Cadogan, fourth in the World Juniors last year. He made the Pan American final. Still just a teenager. What a night and what a moment for him. Proudly flying the flag for Barbados. 
yet another Caribbean island with great credentials when it comes to sprinting. 10.06 already this season. He'll surely have to go faster if he's to join Usain Bolt and Andre de Grasse in the World Championship final. Representing South Africa, joint record holder, Akani Simbin won the World Student Games earlier this year, just fifth in the Commonwealth 200 metre final last year, but he's an improved athlete this season, hence he's gone under 10. Well, speaking of sub-10 second performances, 10 of those alone this season. This season alone for Mike Rogers, a prolific performer, sixth in the final in Moscow, can he go better? Justin Gatlin, by some margin, the fastest athlete in the world this year, over one and 200 metres. 9.83 in the heats. What can he do here in the semis? Pumped, focused and ready, as he always is, a lightning quick starter. Aaron Brown, semi-finalist in the Olympics over 200 metres, semi-finalist over the one in Moscow two years ago. 23 years of age. World indoor bronze medalist from Qatar, Femi Oganodi. Sub 10 seconds in the heat. He's having a really good season. Can he go one race further here? Poised and bouncing like a boxer, ready for the first bell. Nikhil Ashmead, former world junior silver medalist over 200 metres. He was fifth in the 100 in Moscow two years ago. A vital part of the Jamaican Relay Quartet. Anxious look on his face. And on the outside, representing Great Britain, CJ Uja, European junior gold medalist a couple of years ago, 9.96 last season and this season. The second semi-final of the men's 100 metres. Cadogan Barbados in two. Simbin, South Africa three. Rogers, USA four. Gatlin, USA five. There he is. Brown, Canada, six. Oganode, Qatar, seven. Ashmi, Jamaica, eight. Uja, Great Britain, nine. An expectant hush descends around the Olympic Stadium. Only the first two will advance to the climax of the evening, the final. A clean start, Gatlin usually gets away well and he's done so again here. Ashmi trying to get into his running, Oganode coming away, but it's Gatlin and Rogers by quite some margin. 9.77. And once again, he is underlining his credentials as at least equal favourite with Usain Bolt for this title. And on the evidence of the first semi-final, you might argue he is the overwhelming favourite in his own right. 9.77 confirmed, 9.86 a season's best for Mike Rogers in second place. Oganode will not have a fastest loser spot, he was third in 10 flat. That was very, very impressive from Justin Gatlin. His season looks as though it's getting better and better. The fifth time in seven races this year he's broken 9.8. Great run, fought this run compared to, to uh, Usain Bolt in the previous race. Got a great start, no problems at all. Looking relaxed, if anything else, he's, he's still looking as if he could go a little bit faster if he has to. Slow motion shot from behind. Gatlin here, at this stage really, starting to pull away very, very comfortably indeed. They were miles clear of the rest. It's a slight ease down there towards the line, up five metres or so. So, yeah, a little bit still in the tank. Not much, maybe, but with a time of 9.77, seven, seven, you'd expect that. Season's best for Rogers too, behind him. 9.86. He has been so consistent this season, and that continues here. Justin Gatlin underlining his credentials as the favourite for the 100 metres, 9.77. Rogers takes the other automatic spot with a season's best. Well, the men coming out for the third of the semi-finals, including uh, Gay and Powell, two of the biggest names in sprinting for many years. 
But let's look again at Justin Gatlin, fourth from the right-hand side. He's putting together an almost unmatchable series of 100-metre times. As Peter was saying, something like five or six times he's gone under 9-8 already this season. I guess the question is, how much faster can he go in the final? And what can Usain Bolt find in the big showdown? I think the, the other question is psychologically, what's going to happen when they're matched for the first time, man against man, in the race? Who's got the ability to deal with that and not tense up? Well, here's semi-final three of that uh, 100 metres. On the inside there is Tefian of Iran. The big two, I suppose, are in the middle of the field, seeded well. That's a Tyson Gate, the United States, and Asafa Powell, as we said earlier. But to Jimmy Vicot of France, uh, he won his seat and is the co-holder of the 100-meter record. He looked really good when he won his uh, heat, heat five. Here's Tyson, former world champion. Looked very good in heat two, won it very comfortably indeed. Second in Monte Carlo. Already this year, run under that uh, magic 9-9 with that 987. Safa Powell just to his right in lane six. As I said, he broke the world record in Athens, Gateshead, Zurich, and Rieti in uh, the 100 metres. 32 years of age now, he's the captain of the team in Beijing, and he's been the, mo the most prolific sub-10 run-up in history. I think Peter was saying it's almost, what is it, 90 or so, Peter, sub-10 seconds for the 100. Yes, indeed. It's uh, well. He ran his, um, including wind-assisted knocks. He ran his 98th yesterday. It could be a 99 now. And guess what? In wow. the final. Well, what, Wes? Well, that could be uh, significant, couldn't it? Absolutely strange, almost eerie. But there we go. Let's go through the field again. Tefian is of Iran. The Iranian record at the 100 meters. Not quite broke uh, 10 seconds yet. His best 10.10. He's in exalted company here, isn't he, really? Just on his inside, Richard Kilty, Great Britain, the world indoor champion and the European indoor champion at the 60 metres. Goes very fast for the first 60 metres, but he slightly lacks a little bit over that last uh, part of the race, and that's where his Achilles heel is, I suppose. And then this very good Frenchman, Jimmy Vico of France, co-holder of that record with Francis Abacuelio. Looked good. Got a slight strapping, or he did have, and he's uh, heat, but it's come off now for this semi final. Tyson Gay at the United States. Well, the Americans are coming strong in the 100 metres. Not so good in the 400 hurdles, but they're really doing well here. And Tyson, obviously, a big favourite in this race. And the big man on his outside, Asafa Powell of Jamaica. One of the greatest sprinters of all time. Maybe not at his best, but he is still a major threat. Crowd love it. To his right from Barbados, Ramon Hittens, second in qualifying in Heat 3. The Pan American silver medalist at the 100 metres. Looking slightly worried as well, he should be. And then another good athlete, Chandri Martina of Netherlands. He and you're saying Bolt were the only men to have contested both Olympic sprint finals in Beijing and London. Finally, in lane nine, Matiti of the Ivory Coast, the African champion. Third in his qualifying heat. All eyes, really, I suppose, on the middle lanes, but you never know, really. Tyson Gay always takes that final sip of water before he goes down to the blocks. Does this every time, raises his arms. It's a ritual. It's what most athletes seem to have in the 100 metres. They like to be absolutely perfect when they go down to the blocks. Tefian, Kilti, Rico, Gay, Powell, Gittens, Martina and Matiti. away this time and Gay got a good start Gittens also got a good start but in the middle of the field at the moment it looks like Powell and Tyson Gay coming through Tyson Gay's getting it Powell maybe on the line and Vico I think in third place at the moment winning time 9.96 
Well, camera's focusing on Gay, but it was close again in that race. Slight headwind, minus 0.4 shown on the wind clock. Uh, it, uh, they're all looking up at the scoreboard, Peter. It's not yep. uh, straightforward, and they've given it to Tyson Gate. Well, the reason the crowd are getting excited is because Jimmy Vico has finished in third place in 9.99, which means we have three athletes in fastest loser spots all on the same time. Bian Zhang Xu of China, Trayvon Brumel from the first heat in 9.99, so all three of them are tied, and potentially... There's only room for two. Not necessarily. This is a nine-lane track. But normally, they would now look at thousands. What you do, I mean, that is the qualifying condition, so I'm sure that will happen. They'll see on thousands who, which of the nine nines is quickest. Anyway, but let's get back to the race itself. Tyson Gay, I think, was working hard. Asafa Powell come really well at the end. The last few strides, he was relaxing through and just missed out, I think, on dipping. If he'd have dipped, it would have been even closer. I think Powell's under a little bit of pressure because you called it correctly, Steve. Gittens of Barbados got out really, really hard. So Powell found himself behind on his left with Gay, behind on his right from Gittins, and it took the Jamaican a little longer to get into his rhythm than he perhaps would have liked. Gittins got out brilliantly. I think Powell had to work very, very hard to ensure automatic qualification there. The camera angle is deceptive here. It's following them, really, and it looked at the beginning when we saw the race that actually Gay led all the way. But I think maybe at some stage there, it was only over the last sort of 50 metres or so that Gay started to come ahead. Powell was closing him down again. It was preciously close. None of those men, I don't think, had any more to give in that race. Whereas we saw previously the relaxed performance of some of the other athletes. There it is, the confirmation. 9.96 for Tyson Gay, Safa Powell's 9.97, and as Rob's pointed out, Jimmy Vico there in France, 9.99. And so while we're not absolutely certain who will be the eight men to contest the final, one thing we do know, they will all have broken 10 seconds in their semi-finals.